Hey everybody, welcome to this week's Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Steph Zamorano and Ron Placone. Hello. Howdy, howdy. So I don't know if you heard the news. The Pentagon now is uh, going to be controlling troop levels and not the president. Isn't that something? Look at that. It's great news, right? Here, here, guess what? Welcome back. President Trump giving the Pentagon authority to set force levels in Afghanistan. Defense officials reportedly planning to send nearly 4,000 additional troops to Afghanistan, though no decision has been made yet. 4,000 additional troops they're going to send. And that should take care of Afghanistan then, right? That's yeah. I that, mean, so could... now the Pentagon gets to set the troops that because that was a big problem. We had a president didn't know anything about war setting the troop levels. That's why we haven't been able to win. Now the Pentagon they're allowed to set the troop levels. They figured it out. All we need is four thousand more. We're going to win this MFR. Is that what they're saying? Welcome back. President Trump giving the Pentagon authority to set force levels in Afghanistan. Defense officials reportedly planning to send nearly 4,000 additional troops to Afghanistan, though no decision has been made yet. You know, that's the beauty, right? So that's the thing I love about the Afghanistan war. I mean, sure, we've been bombing for 16 years and it's going awfully. But the United States doesn't give up on tragically flawed ideas just that easily. I mean, look at our commitment to capitalism, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 4,000. Here's 4. So 4,000 soldiers are not going to make a difference in Afghanistan. All we'll make sure is that the war will go on a little bit longer. That's all. It's not gonna, nothing's going to happen. Here's some, here's some things that 4,000 people could actually help with. Uh, a poorly attended festival concert that would help if you had Absolutely. four thousand. Move energy, yeah. moving day for a hoarder four thousand people would help. <laughs> uh, relocating a piano store. <laughs> a lot of heavy lifting involved in that. Things that four thousand people likely won't help. A failing war with no positive impact whatsoever. There you go. Uh, this is definitely a good strategy because we know the biggest problem going on in Afghanistan is that uh, the Afghanistans have a bigger army than we do. <laughs> right? That's really the problem. The Taliban's army is bigger than us. We just, they've been out 4,000-ing us. We only need 4,000. And they spend way more on their military than we do. They oh, way yeah. Way more than the United States way does. Way more. All right, I know this sounds crazy. Why are we in Afghanistan, Jimmy? Why are we there? We're in Afghanistan, so to because uh, if we don't fight him over there, we have to fight him over here. <laughs> That's literally what they said back then. They That's hate what, our freedoms. They Steph. hate our freedoms. Oh, okay, got it. And if we don't fight him over there, we have to fight him over here, just like in uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. And this is all about spreading democracy. Yeah. Oh, this is, of course. Why we're in Afghanistan to help people? That's why we're there. <laughs> we're spreading democracy because we've really nailed it over here. We've nailed it, so we should we should totally be teaching it. We're gonna fix. We're trying to fix Afghanistan, and then right after we fix Afghanistan, by the way, how do we fix it with bombs and soldiers? And right after we do that, we're gonna try to fix uh, Flint and then Detroit. <laughs> uh, sixteen-year war, and it's going awful. I bet the public is so wary of this. At least we know ending the wars and investing the money back home is something that uh, has bipartisan support for both parties, right? I mean, isn't that what the <laughs> Let's listen. She has some more to say. This on the heels of Defense Secretary James Mattis giving lawmakers this stark assessment of where we are in the war just last week. Listen. Do you agree that we're not winning in Afghanistan? Sir, I understand the urgency. I understand it's my responsibility. Uh, we're not winning in Afghanistan right now. Joining me right now. Wow. Well, <laughs> shocker. We're not winning. I thought we were very close. What does that mean, winning? What do you mean win? What they mean win is that the people who live there would leave the Taliban. The Taliban, leave, they live there. They're not leaving. That's the problem. Well, I thought winning meant that terror wasn't a thing anymore, which, you know, you're definitely going to get there by killing somebody's uh, wife and children and, and killing civilians. That's definitely not going to piss anybody off. Here in the United States, we treat the Afghan war the same way most people treat the heat rash. Just ignore it. It'll go away. <laughs> Just ignore it. We are not winning in Afghanistan. Well, son of a gun. What do we got to do to start win winning? Winning. 
Winning in someone else's country with military people. Can you imagine if you walked out of your house and you drove to the corner and there was an Afghani army uh, army person standing with a M16 and said, get out of the car, I need to go through your car, make sure you're not a terrorist in your own goddamn country? That sounds like winning. And you say, what's going on? And they say, I don't know, but there's going to be 4,000 more of us and then we're going to win this, puppy. And then we're going to win gonna this. Be- win. What is win in Afghanistan? No one will tell you what win in Afghanistan means. What does it mean? Does, have you ever heard what it means by winning Afghanistan, Steph? No. Ron, have you ever heard what it means? No. We got. I have a millennial here. If, Arno, have you ever? Did, did anybody ever tell you what it means to? No. We are not winning. We're not winning. What does that mean? Of course, we're not winning. We're occupying someone else's country. Get the fuck out of their country. Get out of their country. Stop killing them. Come back here. Try to fix our country. We got, we got poison water out from coast to coast. Half the countries, half the wage earners in America are in less than thirty thousand dollars. People can't afford their medicine. Old people cut back on their health care. There's no, there's no affordable public housing in half the goddamn country. What's going on? We're gonna fix Afghanistan. We're losing in Afghanistan. No kidding. War has got to be the only thing where practice does not make perfect. (laughs) Because, goddamn, we are getting shittier at it all the time. And no one cares. No one's screaming for the end of the Afghan war. Is Nancy Pelosi screaming? Is Dianne Feinstein? Is Chuck Schumer? Who's screaming for the end of the Afghan war? No one. Except maybe Rand Paul. No one. No one. There's no more anti-war party. There's no left left in America. There's no left. In power in America. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is a corporate tool. Who's cool with prison labor. Who's cool with giving Steve Mnuchin a pass when he was kicking old ladies out of their houses. That's who Kamala Harris is. And she's always on board for more war. There's no hope in the Democratic Party. Just so you know. We're not winning in Afghanistan. Who knew?